the enigmatic ritual unveiling the horror of ashes. Scary story. The Ash Ritual, a horror story. I still remember the day. It had been a normal one. Nothing was happening until I received a message from my friend Alberto. The message said to come to his house and, by the way, bring matches, candles, white sheets, and alcohol. At first, I thought we were going to burn things in the backyard of his house. I wasn't thrilled with the idea, but I had been bored for a couple of hours, searching for something to watch on Netflix and finding nothing. I didn't have matches at home, but I took a lighter, ripped the white sheets from my drawing notebook, and bought alcohol at the pharmacy on my way to my friend's house. When I arrived at Alberto's, I found him excited. He told me that the night before, he had spent time with his witch grandmother, as he referred to her. She always claimed she had been a witch in Veracruz, which no one believed. He told me that she had shared a curious ritual with him, one that could make contact with the other world. The ritual was simple, according to him. First, we had to make ashes using some plants, giving earthly form to the spirit. Add a bit of wood so it could exist in our plane, fabric from clothing, or an object from someone no longer with us to create the bridge. And finally, a page from a book, which would give it up. Quite specific for my taste, but I didn't see a major issue. The plants were from his backyard, the wood from an old chair in his house, the fabric was a handkerchief from one of his relatives, and lastly, the white sheets I had brought. In the end, everything went into the fire on a grill in the backyard, all carefully done to avoid burning the house. While turning everything into ashes, Alberto muttered some words his grandmother had told him. They didn't sound like anything to me, but I didn't interrupt. Amidst the aroma of herbs and the warmth of the bonfire, it was truly relaxing. I even felt like I was entering a trance. I closed my eyes. I reopened them when my friend told me everything was ready. Now, all we had to do was open all the doors of the house. That would serve as an invitation to any spirit willing to listen. With everything turned into ashes, we entered the house and went to the living room. We lit all the candles and took our seats. He scattered the ashes, forming a triangle, and said some words, welcoming the spirit, letting it know we wanted to talk to it. At that moment, I could see a bit of ash moving away, no longer part of the triangle. Slowly, it moved toward the center, forming the word Y-E-S-F. Of course, the first thing I thought was that it was an incredibly elaborate and tasteless joke. Maybe there was some metallic powder in the ashes, and possibly there was a magnet under the table or something like that. My friend denied everything. I checked under the table, and there was nothing there. I told Alberto that if this was all real, I was afraid it could be dangerous. He replied that there was no risk at all. We weren't summoning anything. We just wanted to ask some simple questions. He also clarified that any question we asked should be answerable with a single word because his witch grandmother had warned that making the spirit exert more effort to articulate words would give it strength and things could get really ugly. His response seemed reasonable, so I asked a question. 
I wanted to know if the spirit we were talking to actually belonged to his friend's relative. The ashes in the center moved again, rearranging themselves. The answer was N.O. My friend shrugged, then asked about the identity of the spirit we had contacted. A bit more ash broke off from the triangle, moved to the center, and formed four letters. S.A.M.A. The Ritual of Ashes Horror Story. That sent shivers down my spine, as I didn't even know the name S.A.M.A. existed. It seemed like a woman's name to me. I didn't know what else to ask. The first thing that came to my mind was trying to find out where the spirit came from. But there was no response. The ashes didn't budge an inch. My friend repeated the same question, but nothing happened. We didn't want to ask the question a third time, thinking that the reason for not getting a response was that it needed to use two or more words to answer, and we definitely didn't want that. We didn't even have time to think of another question, when suddenly all the doors shook as if a strong gust of wind had entered. I told my friend that it had been enough that we still had time to abandon everything before things became unbearable. At that moment, we could hear several strange noises, as if something very heavy was hitting against the furniture. I immediately got up, fully intending to leave the house, but Alberto stopped me, saying he couldn't be left alone. I told him I had no intention of staying inside, so he could either come out with me or stay. The noises grew louder and the floor began to vibrate. We were definitely not alone anymore. As if that wasn't enough, an unpleasant sound started, like the noise that occurs when you shiver from cold and your teeth chatter that was faintly audible. He couldn't make up his mind so I went straight to the door. That's when he shouted at me, saying that if we left the house without completing the ritual, the spirit we had invoked could attach itself to one of us. I cursed at him. He had gotten us into a serious problem. I told him to do whatever he had to do, but to do it quickly. He looked at the ashes and asked if we could leave. The chairs started moving, and the table, too. I rushed closer to see the response. SAMA said no. The table flipped, and we had to move away to avoid it falling on us. Suddenly, the bathroom door swung open abruptly, hitting the wall with such force that the doorknob flew off. We realized that when the table flipped, the ash had fallen to the floor and scattered. In theory, the ritual had been abruptly interrupted by the spirit, so there shouldn't be consequences for us. We turned toward the door, and what happened next, I can't explain. The window started shrinking. It's challenging to describe, but what was happening is that the wall was growing, making the window smaller. It makes no sense, but that's how it happened. We tried to open the door to leave the house, but the moment I touched the doorknob, I got horribly burned. That thing was burning. I looked at my hand to see the injury, and it was completely red. That wasn't going to stop us. We had to get out of the house, or we'd be dead. The lights started flickering. Alberto ran to the bathroom for some towels and used them to turn the doorknob and open the door. That's how we managed to get out. We ran to the sidewalk and collapsed. We were exhausted and extremely tense, filled with panic. In less than half an hour, Alberto's mom arrived, found us outside, 
and asked what was happening. We told her, knowing she wouldn't believe us. She asked us to show her. The three of us entered the house and everything was completely in order. Nothing moved from its place. The table was just as it was when we started the ritual. The ashes still formed the triangle. And, of course, the windows were closed. Neither my friend nor I understood anything. Alberto's mother told us to sit down, served us soda, scolded us, and explained that the plants we had taken from the yard had certain recreational properties. She had them because she consumed them as part of a treatment she was undergoing for some reason I don't recall. Alberto and I looked at each other completely bewildered. Then my friend told me to check my hand, the one that got burned. It was no longer red, and I felt no pain, but the doorknob left a mark, as if I had been holding it for a long time and with a lot of force. Alberto rushed to the bathroom for towels, and they too had the doorknob imprint. He brought them to the table and showed them to his mom. She was surprised, but didn't say anything, and we didn't bring up the topic again. To this day, we don't know what really happened. On the one hand, the explanation about the plants makes sense, but it doesn't explain the mark on my hand or the imprint on the towels. Thank you for joining us for this spine-tingling story. We hope you found it both thrilling and thought-provoking. If you enjoyed this video, please consider participating in our channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing it with your friends. Your support goes a long way in helping us create more engaging content for you. Goodbye. And may you always tread carefully in the world of the unknown.